Buying a car is an important financial decision, which is why it is so important to understand that it never makes financial sense to buy a new car. I'm Bradford with a Penny Pinchers Guide, and if you're shopping in the market for a car, I wanna give you six tips that's gonna help you save big in the long run when you buy your next car. The first tip that I wanna give you is that the entire purpose of a car is to get you from A to B. Yes, that might sound like it is common sense. Of course, duh. That's why we have a car is so that we can drive around and travel. But when it comes to the financial side of buying a car, you need to understand you do not need all the bells and whistles. While it might be nice to have heated and cooled seats and a car that has automatic cruise control, none of those things change the fundamental reason of why you have a vehicle in the first place. And if you understand that you can buy a car that has fewer additional luxuries and add-ons, you're gonna save a lot of money just by never buying them in the first place. The second tip that I wanna give you is that all cars are depreciating assets. Now, it's worthwhile to note from the beginning, what exactly is a depreciating asset? Now, a depreciating asset is something that when you buy it, it loses value over time. This is in contrast to an appreciating asset. The most common one that we are familiar with is our house. When you buy a house, so you buy it for $100,000, and over time, that house is gonna be worth more. So let's say in 10 years, now it's worth $150,000 because it has appreciated in value because it is an appreciating asset. Now cars on the other hand, except for the very, very, very small minority where you happen to luck out and you buy what is going to be the new classic car in 30 years down the line. But for everybody else, when you buy a car, it is going to go down in value and it is going to continue going down in value until it is worthless. Now, as for how much it exactly goes down in value, the average car in the first 12 months that you own it is gonna lose 20% of its value. There's a reason that they say that the most expensive drive you'll ever make is when you drive that car off the lot. Literally by the act of you purchasing it, it is going to immediately depreciate in value because it is no longer a new car. You are the first owner and anyone else who owns it it will have been purchased as a used car. Now, after that first year, the average vehicle is gonna depreciate an additional 10% per year. So by the time that vehicle is five years old, it's worth only 40% of its original value. And if you're like me and a picture helps you understand things better, check out this graphic right here. It shows you the price of a $25,000 car and over time how that price and value of that vehicle just absolutely plummets. Now, understanding that a car is a depreciating asset is extremely valuable to the next tip that I wanna give you. And that's gonna be tip three, which is never finance a depreciating asset. Now, you're already losing money on this vehicle by the virtue that it is a depreciating asset and it loses value over time. So why would you get a loan on it and then you're paying interest, in fact, throwing more money away for the same vehicle? Now, you might hear the argument, hey, what if instead of having the cash that I have to go buy a new vehicle, I finance that same vehicle and I take the cash and invest it in the market. Now that goes behind the whole idea of using leverage to further your investments. But here's the thing, a car is not an investment. And especially if you're young and you don't have a credit history, you're going to be paying extremely high interest rates on the money that you're using to finance your vehicle. And here, we have the rates from September right here for the average. So especially if you're young, you don't have much of a credit history, you could be paying more than 10% per year just to be able to buy that car. Now, I don't care how good you are with your money, there is no way that you can absolutely guarantee your investments are gonna get you a 10% ROI every single year with 100%. The second you sign that paper and finance that vehicle, that car dealership and the finance office, they have a guaranteed whatever percent interest rate you signed on to that they're gonna be paid that every single year or they get to take your car back. Now, I do wanna throw in the little caveat in there for the people saying, but, 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 but what if they offer me $1,000 back to finance the vehicle and then I go and pay it all off in cash? Why wouldn't I finance the vehicle so that I can get that deduction and get those savings? Now, if that's the instance and you're actually responsible enough to finance the vehicle and then pay it off with cash so you get those initial savings, do it. I did it with my last vehicle. So that's one way of getting savings to be in your favor. Just make sure you're not saying that you're paying with cash until after you finance the vehicle. Tip four when it comes to buying a car, and while it might sound simple, is don't forget the routine maintenance. Your car needs to have its oil changed and needs to have its tires rotated. Whether you go to a car dealership and you get all your maintenance done there, 
or you're a DIY kind of person, you like to do all your oil changes at home, stay on top of them. Whether you're using standard or synthetic oil, make sure you're doing those routine oil changes. I promise you it makes much more sense to pay $30 an oil change and do them regularly than have to replace your entire engine every few years because you're not staying on top of your maintenance. Plus, this goes back into the factor of depreciation. If you take really good care of your vehicle, it's gonna lose less value. So by the time maybe you save up some money and you wanna buy a nicer vehicle, you'll be able to sell your current vehicle for more if you took really good care of it. One last thing I wanna throw in with regards to the routine maintenance is if you are a DIY person, I highly recommend you look at like walmart.com to actually buy your oil and filters. Oftentimes you'll get a much better deal there than if you buy from like an AutoZone or Pet Boys or something like that. Now the fifth thing I wanna to talk to you about is warranties and extended warranties. If you buy a used vehicle and it still has the original manufacturer's warranty on it, great, that's a good thing to have. But if whoever you're buying the vehicle from offers to sell you an extended warranty, don't take it. Now, big picture, this applies to basically any instance when you're offered to buy an extended warranty. What's going on here is the company selling the warranty is in the business to make money. So they're not going to cover a part that they're likely to have to replace. Any manufacturer, not just car manufacturers, they run an analysis on their parts to see how long it takes for various parts to fail. And then what they do is they cover the very initial portion of that where basically all of the parts are guaranteed to run the entire time. So any warranty claims that you're actually cut, so any warranty claims that they are actually covering is gonna be the very small and extreme outliers that failed far before they were typically supposed to. Now, if you're interested in more of the math and statistics behind how warranties and extended warranties cover things, I have an article in the description below that you can get into it, all the most up-to-date data, at least from the tail end of 2019. Now, the sixth tip I wanna to talk to you about is insurance and the premiums that you're paying. Now, something that you might not know and I thought was interesting when I was researching for my book in this video is that there are 13 very variables that go in to deciding what your insurance premium is when an insurance company is evaluating you. And they are geographical location, age, gender, marital status, years of driving experience, driving record, claims record, credit history, previous insurance coverage, vehicle type, miles driven annually, coverages on the vehicle, and the deductibles that you choose. Now, if you're looking at those variables, you'll probably realize that most of the factors you can't change at all, or the ones that you can change, it's not an instant fix. So the single variable that you have the most direct impact on is even the type of car that you drive. So you want a car that has a strong reliability history and is going to last a long time. Now, where do you go to actually figure out what cars are going to fall into that bracket? US News and then JD Powers, they typically offer updated annual reports that's going to tell you which cars are the best in its various categories. You have your subcompact, compact cars, full-size cars, trucks, vans, what have you. Now, in terms from this video, what would I recommend would be a nice used Toyota Camry or a used Honda Accord. Those are two of the most highly rated cars when it comes to reliability. So moving past the type of car that you choose to drive, going back to those 13 factors, while some of them are immutable and you can't change, you don't have a direct impact on how old you are. Every year, you're gonna be a year older, you can't change that. But certain things like your driving record and where you live, if you drive well, you don't get in accidents, your insurance premium is gonna go down. One of the factors I found the most interesting is gonna be where you live. So insurance companies run different analyses to determine what are the crime rates, what are the accident rates for different areas. So sometimes all it takes to lower your insurance premium might just be moving one street over so you're in a different neighborhood. It's just something to consider. And over time, you can actually have a pretty good impact on lowering your insurance premiums more than you might originally expect. So with those six tips in mind, I wanna wrap back around to my initial statement that it never makes financial sense to buy a new car. So with all those things in mind, does this change anything? The answer is no. No matter how wealthy you are, no matter how much money you're making per year, no matter what your net worth is, it is never going to make financial sense to buy a new car simply because it's a depreciating asset. It will always make more sense to wait a few years till the car is used and most of its depreciation has occurred before you buy it. You buy a car, it's two, three years old, you're saving a lot of money up front. Now, outside of the financial sense, this isn't to say that you should never buy a new car. I think Dave Ramsey actually has some really good advice on the matter and his suggestion as a rule of thumb when it comes to buying a new car is that you should not buy a new car until you have a net worth of over a million dollars. The thinking behind this is that once you have that level of net worth, you can afford to buy a new car and the depreciation, the value that you're just basically throwing away, you can afford to take that hit. And it's not going to significantly affect your future finance. Kind of relating this to something that more people can physically understand is the concept of going out to eat at a really expensive restaurant. Now, it never financially makes sense to go buy a $100 steak. 
you can always go cook at home for a fraction of the price of what it's going to cost for you to go out to eat. See, going out to eat is not a financial decision. There's a lot of different subjective factors that go into it, but no one says you should never go out to eat. You just need to understand that it is not a financial investment that you're making. It's not a sound financial decision. You're making the decision because you want to go out with friends. You want to enjoy the atmosphere. You are putting that money into an opportunity or an experience. Basically the same principle applies with a new car. When you buy a new car, it's not a financial investment. It's not a sound financial decision. You like the new car smell. You want to have the convenience of less maintenance that you have to do or having the car covered under some sort of warranty plan. Understanding exactly what you're doing with your money and how you're choosing to spend it along with its future impacts is really the big point that I want to get out of this. So with all that in mind, I hope some of this information can help you make a more informed decision when shopping for your next car. Thanks again for joining me and until next time, just remember to pinch a little. Thanks for watching. And if you liked this video, make sure to check out the video that's on the left hand side of your screen. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like more great content and to support our channel.